Hi team, Ace is up here for Pokenerf back again with a video all about power numbers and how we can use them to make better decisions in isolation spots in a PKO. So uh, what I'll do first before we get into the nitty gritties of this tutorial is uh, just run through what power numbers are for those that don't use power numbers. Some people might never have heard of them. Uh, some people may have heard of them but just decided that they prefer to use BBs. Of course, the Pokenerf Road to Success uh, members will be using them. Very effective, but despite how good they are, for some reason uh, they aren't what I would call mainstream, but certainly a lot of people know about them and a decent percentage of regs do use them. So this is what power numbers look like. So when you're in a situation where you're short, uh, that's when they're traditionally used. A lot of players will use BBs and for example in this spot, you can see that I've jammed all in since I only have 10.5 big blinds. Uh, and I know that this hand is going to be profitable if I'm using a BB system. Uh, some people use Genifier, you might have heard of that. Uh, and it tells you what hands you can jam. You know, you might have a suited ace or a suited gappa or connector like this or pairs. And you know what's profitable to jam or not. And when you get short, you uh, obviously aren't raised folding, so you take these jams. But power numbers is great because it's very fast and easy to use, but also gives you vision of how strong your hand is, not just whether it's profitable, but how strong. So first we work out our M, which is, if I just step back here for a minute, all M is, of course, is our stack, 5217, divided by 1205. And... Uh, I'm sure a lot of you know what M is, but if you don't, that's it. You just divide your stack by the amount in the pot at the start of the hand. And so uh, we have M 4.3. You can see there's a small blind, big blind, and antis. So we factored all of that in, and uh, we have 4.3 times the small blind, big blind, and antis combined, uh, which means we are short and we're looking to jam. Normally, if you're around under sort of M 7-ish, uh, you're sort of getting into that sort of jam or fold mode. Um, you might in some instances still have a few raises and so forth, but that's about when you're looking to jam or fold. So now we say with our M of 4.3 that we have four players behind. So we times it by four and you see that we have 17.3 and that is the power number required to profitably shove in this spot. So it's very simple. All you do is just work out your M and then just multiply it by the number of players behind. So it's something that only takes a few seconds in game. And then if you have your power number chart or some people have memorized it, um, I think after you use it for a while, you kind of get used to you know, what fits where, but it might look a little bit complicated for some people at first, but it is very easy because we know now that we can jam anything that has a strength for this situation above 17.3. And when I say strength, of course, I mean the power number value. So. The pairs are in the middle here, diagonally across, and on the right of that are the suited hands, and on the left are the offsuit hands. So all you have to do is just go along here, follow the grid. So you can see 10.8 offsuit has a PN of 10. And we said we needed 17.3, so that doesn't make the cut at all. Uh, if we had 9.7 suited, well, that would be pretty borderline. Looks like it would be probably slightly losing, but very close. If players behind, we think they overfold, we might throw that into a jam basket. But we have 10-8 suited, and we can see that has a PN of 26, which is solidly above 17.3. So we have that buffer, and we know that it is actually quite profitable. If we had King Jack suited, we can see that's really profitable. And even a hand like King 10 suited has a PN of 66. So let's just say we didn't have an M of 4.3. Let's say we had an M here of 16, which would be something like 40 big blinds. We could theoretically just shove first in and not be losing money. So with power numbers, we instantly know that. It's very quick to know the strength of your hand in any situation. Uh, of course, you wouldn't just jam that deep. Very rarely anyway. Uh, very unlikely you're going to just jam 40 big blinds M16 with four players behind. Uh, I guess maybe if uh, in a bubble or with big pay jumps with some ICM spot, it's not impossible. Um, but if you if you did want to use it for some reason, wait, let me think. Uh, progressive knockouts. 
Okay, that's why. So it's a fantastic system uh, in the progressive knockouts because we can see how deep we can shove if we should want to. Uh, and you can see in this spot, obviously, uh, I'm just going to shove. Uh, everyone folds and we pick up the pot. So just a quick hand here to show you what this will look like in real time. Table pops up. We can see there's 14,000 in the pot to start the hand. And there's an all in. Short stack. They don't even have 14,000. They have less than M1, just two big blinds. So they'll be jamming a really wide range. Uh, so we know King-6 off against their wide range is going to be in pretty good shape and have good equity. Uh, it's so cheap to call anyway, but we have one player behind to worry about. The effective M size is going to be our stack size since we are a little bit shorter. And that's only around M8, not even M7.5. But how is King-6 off doing? Well, it has a PN of 9. And that's more than 7.5. So that would be profitable from a chip EV standpoint. Not to mention in this spot, we've got the extra amount juicing up the pot and the sweet, sweet bounty. Let's shove it in, make the profitable play and isolate, make two pair, had the best hand anyway. Easy, easy money in PKOs. That's how you do it. Uh, so that's it for now. We've gone into quite a lot of depth here about power numbers. Uh, so I hope you found it useful and you're going to be able to apply it in game. This was Aces Up for Poker Nerve. Thanks for watching. Knockout tournaments are the best value MTTs around if you play them the right way. So be sure to check out Poker Nerve's Bounty Hunter course and become the best player at your table. Thanks for watching.